All right, so my goal for this video is to help you understand how to dilate an image when the center of dilation is not at the origin. So in this example, I'm going to dilate triangle ABC by a scale factor of 1 half. Um, I want to start out with point A because I think it will do the best job of helping you understand where this concept is coming from. What I want to do is I want to attach each of the three vertices of the triangle to my center of dilation. And then I'm going to decrease that distance by cutting it in half since my scale factor is one half. And realize that this is a dilation, but it's more specifically called a reduction because my scale factor is less than 1, but greater than 0. So that means my new triangle, A prime, B prime, C prime, is going to be smaller than my original triangle. So let's start by looking at the distance from the center of dilation to point A. So here's my distance. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six units long. And I want to cut that in half. So I'm going to put a point right here. Because then that is cutting it in half to get three on each side. Now I'm going to erase the line that I just created just to make it not so um, not so much to look at, not too confusing. So there's my new point A prime. Now I'm going to do the same thing for points B and C, but what you're going to notice is that because it's at a diag at diagonal, we're going to have to do something a little bit different. We're going to have to look at two sides of the triangle that I'm creating right here. So what I did is I created a triangle connecting point B to my center of dilation. So I'm going to start by looking at my vertical change or the vertical distance between these two points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a vertical change of eight. And my horizontal change is one, two, three, four, five. Five on the horizontal. So I want to use my scale factor to multiply by the vertical distance and my horizontal distance. So half of the number 8 would be 4. So that means I would be going up 4 units. 1, 2, 3, 4. So right here. Okay. And then looking at my horizontal distance of 5, if I multiply that by my scale factor, that gives me 2.5. So, right here. So what I would do is I would find the point where those would meet up, where they would intersect. And that's that right here, very close to C. So that would be my new location for B prime. I'm going to pause the video so that I can erase those lines that I just created so it's not too much to look at. Alright, so now I'm going to continue this same process for letter C. So what I'm going to do is create my triangle again and look at the vertical and horizontal distance. So my vertical distance is 1, 2, 3, 4. My horizontal distance is 2. So I'm going to do that same process. If I cut my vertical distance in half, since my scale factor is 1 half, that's going to put me 
right here on the x-axis. And then I'm going to do the same process with my horizontal distance of 2. If I cut that in half, that would be at 1. So I'm going to look at where these would meet up. And it looks like this is my location, my new location for C prime. So um, now that I can see my new triangle, and let me go ahead and erase some of the lines that I just created. There we go. So let's focus on our new triangle, A prime, B prime, C prime. It is not congruent to my original triangle because it was a reduction, so it got smaller. And if we consider the length of the sides, if I were to use my distance formula to calculate the length of side AC and compare that to the length of side A prime C prime, I would find that A prime C prime is going to be half of that distance because my scale factor was one half. Now I'm going to show you how we can look at where these points are coming from algebraically. And let me just point out, in case you haven't already noticed, my center of dilation is located at 3, negative 2. So I'm going to pause the video so I can put my new points, uh, so I can write down all of my points. Okay, so let's look at my next slide where I'm going to show you the original points, center of dilation, and my new points on the new triangle. So let's consider where these points are coming from on the new triangle that we just created. I've discussed during class how whenever you're doing a dilation where the center of dilation is the origin, your algebraic representation can be found by multiplying the x and y coordinate by the scale factor. So that's where I would ask you to maybe start to think of how I could do that here. And just as a reminder, my scale factor is one half. So let's consider what we would do here in order to help us get started to see where some of these numbers could be coming from. So I would start with point A. Point A has an x-coordinate of 3. And if I multiply that by my scale factor, and then I know that I'm going to add some number. I'm going to call it x. And that's giving me my new location of A prime, which is at 3. So let's work this out. 3 times a half is 1.5 plus x equals 3. So I want to subtract 1.5 from both sides. So x is a positive 1.5. I'm going to write that over here uh, just so that I can keep track of it because I'm going to now look at my y-coordinate. So my y-coordinate on the original point A is at 4. So I'm going to do 4 times 1 half plus some number y would give me the y-coordinate on a prime, which is 1. So 4 times a half is 2, plus y equals 1. I'm going to subtract 2 on both sides. y is negative 1. Let me write that over here so we can keep track of it. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if maybe this same process will work for point B. And I'm going to check my work by looking at 
the coordinates we got for B prime. So point B is located at 8, 6. So I'm going to start by multiplying 8 by my scale factor. And then I'm going to see what happens when I add 1.5. Since that's the number that worked on point A, I want to see if that will give me the new location for B prime. So 8 times 1 half is 4. 4 plus 1.5 is 5.5. And that would add up for me because if we look at B prime, oops, sorry, I thought I had my highlighter on. Here we go. If we look at B prime, that is the correct x value. So now I'm going to continue this same process looking at my y coordinate. So the original B had a y coordinate of 6. So let me multiply that by the scale factor. And then I'm going to subtract 1 because if you look at the bottom left hand corner, if I'm working with my y coordinate, I noticed that I subtracted 1. 6 times 1 half is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. That also works when I look at my um, y coordinate at B prime. So we can continue by checking C. In fact, I encourage you to pause the video and do so. Because I'm noticing a pattern here, I would write my algebraic representation by saying I'm taking my x coordinate, I'm multiplying by 1 half, which is the same as dividing by 2. Let me write that a little bit nicer. And you know what, let me just go ahead and, and write out the, um, my scale factor. So I'm multiplying the x-coordinate by my scale factor, and I'm adding 1.5. And then I'm multiplying my y-coordinate also by my scale factor, and then I'm subtracting 1. Let me erase this to have more room. Now, if I'm considering where could this, where could these points be coming from, or why am I getting an x of adding 1.5, and then for my y, I'm subtracting 1. And I want to con consider how might this be coming about when I look at my, my center of dilation over here. My center of dilation, if I multiply my x and y by the scale factor, I'm noticing that I'm getting 3 divided by 2, which is 1.5, and negative 2 divided by 2, which is a negative 1. So that's something to think about and how that could relate to my algebraic representation of what's happening when I'm doing this dilation. I hope that this video was helpful.